call to order the meeting of the 10th meeting of the 2012-2013 Common Council. Will the clerk read the quote of the day? Good leaders make people feel that they're at the very heart of things, not at the periphery. Everyone feels that he or she makes a difference to the success of the organization. When that happens, people feel centered and that gives their work meaning. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Fifteen present. There's quorum present. Alderman Van Akron is excused. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Will Alderman, Alderman Wangaman please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Motion for approval of the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a mo uh, motion to approve the minutes. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Is there any discussion or changes? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. Mayor's appointments. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Marilyn Montemayor to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Housing Rehabilitation Loan Commission to fill the unexpired term of Jason Shane, whose term expires 4-21-2014, signed by the mayor. That will lie over. And Mario Chiotala to be considered for appointment to the mayor's international committee, term to expire 4-22-2013, signed by the mayor. That also will lie over. Public forum. Yes, we have one this evening. David Gartman. David, if you could come up to the front, please. David, can I have your home address? Uh, 5509 Menning Road. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I'm also a town chairman in the town of Wilson. Um, several of you uh, that have been here before. I was here back last fall to discuss the situation. I don't want to call it a problem at the dog park because luckily I believe there's been no problems. But there's a situation that could occur and that's in the discrepancy of the policing for the dog park. Um, I won't get into all the details. Um, uh, one of our citizens, Phil Marsberger, you probably read his letter to the editor, did a good job. Um, I'm in total agreement with what most of the facts he put out there were accurate. So. So I guess uh, what brings me here again from last fall was that, uh, you know how things go, we negotiated back and forth. Uh, it was um, my thought as a town leader that uh, in the negotiations here with Attorney McLean that perhaps if you had an next about 300 feet of that dog park many years ago, many, I believe to get the Idlewild subdivision in probably was when that happened. What that leaves is two thirds of the area that's policed by the Sheriff's Department with no defined line. That's not good, good policy. Um, this is a, a highly utilized uh, facility and in the future something could happen. So what we were proposing was then to have it the interior of the park only annex, not the trail road to it. So in the process, a uh, concerned citizen or two had concerns to my town supervisors and in the process come up with changing the town's position. So the town's position is conditional that it would revert back to the town if it's not a dog park. That has been supported by the Board of Wilson That'll be your choice here. Uh, the other alternative, because I think it needs to be fixed, and that would be, this is my opinion only, as a joint uh, powers agreement for that legal description of the interior to have policing. I would suggest also we maybe consider ambulance service addressing it too if there would ever be an ambulance call. So it's clear not that if there's dis discrepancies if Orange Cross or Sheboygan should respond. So that's your task tonight. I'm pretty limited. This is a public forum. I'll stay here this evening if you'd have any further questions. But I, if, if nothing's resolved, I think because of the public's interest and safety here, I think the town would have to put an indefinite, perhaps, closure to the facility until this gets resolved somehow. Or else I've had some comments from perhaps maybe just for town residents. Hopefully it won't get there. I like shared services. I think this was a success story. But like anything else, when you start out with an agreement, it's pretty hard to cover everything without overlooking something. I think it's something that hopefully we can all get together on. So thanks so much, and I'll be in the back until you're close at a topic tonight. 
Thanks. Thank you, David. Thank you. That's it. To the consent agenda, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file ROs and accept and adopt all reports of committee. Second. It's been a moved and seconded to accept all ROs and accept all reports of committee 2-1 through 213. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. Done. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. Three one communication will be referred to finance and DPW. Four one an RO from Chief Administrator Officer will lie, o lie over till the November nineteenth meeting. <coughs> Two through four seven will be referred. Four eight. All the University four eight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pull 4-8 for um, just to pull it forward and file it. 4-8 you're asking for? Yes. Are you filing the RO completely? Yes. Is there a second? Motion? That was my motion. Oh. Yes. Second. <laughs> I would hope that the council would not file this. It's a resolution for the um, acceptance of the budget of the mayor's executive budget. Uh, by the statutes and the municipal codes of the city, the mayor is responsible for bringing forward a budget. And to do this without any discussion, I think is um, unprecedented, much less um, we what you're doing is saying we're going to just accept the budget as is and go to November 19th with the current budget. I think we need more discussion on the budget and we would hope we would do this. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think um, every committee has vetted their respective budgets. Um, I know you have some um, thoughts on that and I think uh, document 4.2 that's going to strategic fiscal planning will be the opportunity to discuss that. When it does come to council on the 19th, there'll be opportunities to make changes and adjustments at that point. So sending it back and going through the whole process all over again um, doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense and a very efficient use of time. Thank you. I think it just gives an, an honest um, comparison if we have both of them there. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm not gonna support filing this for the reason that I do not I do not support the two documents that are being held over to November 19th and I was uh, I appreciate your efforts for what you've come up with so far mayor but I was hoping that uh, we would have come up with more even at the committee of the whole but it hasn't happened so far so I'm not going to uh, support sending this or filing this tonight I hope it does go to strategic fiscal planning and I hope maybe we can have another discussion on making some more cuts to the, to the 2013 budget that we can, in fact, get rid of the garbage fee by coming up with enough cuts to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Motion is to file. All those. Okay, hold on just a second. You just want to file, because I've got and refer to strategic. That would not be part of the motion, is that correct? Okay, let me take that out. Okay, the motion is to file. Take accept and file out. Okay. Eight eyes, seven no's. The arrow is filed. Resolution 5-1 through and 5-2 will be referred. Resolution 5-3 lies over. 5-4, resolution by Alderman Heidemann will be referred to Public Works and Finance. Reports of committees. Six-one report from Long Licensing Condition 
conditionally recommending the Common Council to renew the taxi cab license number 6977. Alderman Vanderwille. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. I second that. Is Edwin Lehman here this evening? Yes, I am. He is here. Um, a little bit of history with uh, Mr. Lehman. On June 9, 2011, he appeared before law and licensing, and he had, um, at that time, between 2008 and 2010, he had six uh, driving violations. Law and licensing approved his application three to two, and now he came to us again for a renewal, but he had, it's a renewal, yet it's not, because he came um, later than June 30th. And since his last renewal last year, his license last year, he's had three additional violations, and one included speeding while driving a taxi cab. So we denied his license five to zero. Thank you. <coughs> Sir, would you like to speak and address the council? Come on up to the front, please. Give your name, your full name. Edwin Lehman. Edwin. Okay, go ahead. Um, not really sure what to say about this. Um, it's pretty important that I'm able to drive in the city of Sheboygan. As of this point, I'm driving in Manitowoc, and I'm really not making it there too much. And I'd like to come back to Sheboygan. Um, I don't know. I. I don't really know what else to say, but I'd like to be able to drive in Sheboygan as a taxi driver. I enjoy my job. I enjoy the community. Um, I mean, if any other violations come up, I mean, you can pull them right then and there, but I'd really like to drive back in Sheboygan. Thank you. Is there any questions of the applicant? All right. Thank you. Alderman Bourne. I'm I have, sorry. I have nothing. Alderman Van der Willey. I did too. No. Somebody's <laughs> beeping. Alderman Kath. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, some of those violations that came before law and licensing June 9th last year was a 2008 drive over center line, 2009 improper towing, 2009 failed to yield at stop sign, 2009 defective speedometer, 2009 speeding, 2010 loud music, and 2010 a seatbelt violation. On June 9th, uh, law and licensing, the vote was uh, three to two to, to grant. I was one of the, no. Uh, then last week, I came before the committee again. Uh, since he had the, uh, the taxi cab license, presently not driving a taxi in the city of Sheboygan, and had a tire squealing, a speeding in 2012, and another speeding in 2012 while driving a taxi. And that is why the vote was a five to zero, two to nine. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. Thirteen eyes, two noes. Motion carries. 6-2 and RC from law and licensing conditionally recommending that the Common Council not renew the taxi operator license 9411, Alderman Vanderwille. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman. Uh, is Roxana Ramirez here this evening? She is here. Um, she did not appear at our either of the meetings that we invited her to. So I guess now that she's here, I would ask that we uh, refer this back to law and licensing. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer this back to law and licensing. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. <clears throat> Bill? Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. Six three 
Recommendation from law and licensing recommending denying taxi license number 8936, Alderman Vanderbilt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under discussion, Alderman Vanderbilt. Is Shelley King here this evening? She's not here. Uh, she did not appear to either of the meetings that we invited her to, so we did deny her license. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, the clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 6 4 by a communication from law and licensing recommending tax, denying taxi driver's license 9625, Alderman Vanderwood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the RC be accepted and adopted. Under is, discussion. Is Noah Yang here this evening? He's not here. Um, he also did not appear to the two meetings that we had invited him to, so we had to deny the license. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, clerk will call the roll. 15 ayes. Motion carried. 6-5, a report of committee from salary grievance repealing and recreating section number 82-126 of the municipal code to compensate for overtime. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept and adopt the RC and pass the substitute ordinance. Second. I move and seconded to accept the RC and accept and adopt the ordinance. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, I was wondering if our HR manager, uh, Sandy Rorick, could come forward and uh, explain exactly what this means before we vote on it, please. Alderman uh, Good evening. Sandy, you want to pull it down just a little bit, the mic? There you go. After Act 10 was adopted last year, there were several changes that occurred in our non-represented employees, and that took effect in January. The City Council agreed to follow the Wisconsin and federal F FLSA laws, which means that overtime is calculated based on hours worked, not hours paid during the week. So in the past, people were taking vacation or received holiday pay, and that time was counted towards overtime for calculating the time and a half wages. A few months ago, several employees asked the Salary and Grievance Committee to take a look at several different benefits, and the, ones, the, the one that the Salary and Grievance Committee decided to uh, take a deeper look on was the paying people for overtime when they worked or when they took vacation and holidays. So we did a little research and found that a survey which resulted in 12 municipalities responding, nine of those municipalities do recognize vacation and holidays, three do not. Of those nine that do recognize it at this time, quite a few of those, about 50%, are looking at uh, unions expiring the term at the end of this year or 2013, and at that time they will look at those benefits again. MRA is an organization that we belong to that is an employer's organization, and MRA says that 56% of the employees that they represent do not recognize vacation and holidays. As a city, what this would mean to us is an increased cost and any benefit we take a look at that. Year to date, our exposure would have been about 50, 50 to 55,000 of actual monies paid out, and projecting the remainder of the year with the five holidays, actually six holidays left, we're looking at doubling that, that cost going into 2013. So, any other questions? Any questions? Okay. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you. Could you, you recommended to follow the F, what was that? The, the, the FLSA, the okay. Fair Labor Standards Act. And that was what group, to, was that the, your That's, department that recommended that, or was that? That was the city, city administration department went through the Common Council last year, and okay. it was the council's recommendation. So is it normal protocol to go through salary and grievance, mm -hmm. kind of like to do something like this, or would so there the be? So the first time in a long time that this was a recourse because there was no union representation anymore. 
Okay. So in the past, they would bring it up during negotiations. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Sandy, if, if we vote no on this, uh, the, uh, if we vote no on the substitute ordinance, then we're going to go back to the uh, ordinance that was uh, proposed on June 18th. That was the one that's attached here. I believe I, I believe I was at that salary and grievance meeting, and then, or did we pass that previously? I don't think we did because you were going to do your research, correct? We didn't have a specific ordinance that was proposed prior to this. We had discussions. So if we vote no on the subordinance, what about this, this, uh, this uh, attachment from June 18th that dealt with the normal work week, full week schedule, non-exempt employees is five days, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week? What that had to do with was scheduling uh, compensation comp time if somebody works Sunday they could work Sunday through Thursday and that was a 40-hour work week and then Friday may or may not have to be worked if they worked Friday they would get overtime on Friday mm -hmm. so what that had to do with was in the past people could bank their overtime and they could use it on a future date and that resolution reduced that to say if they worked overtime during the work week, they could only take comp time during that work week. They couldn't bank it. Okay, did we pass this? Yes. We did. So if we vote no on the uh, substitute, this is still in effect. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions? Alderman Donahue. Um, <clears throat> there was a substantial discussion on this matter um, in salary and grievance. Um, the proposal uh, came and do correct me if I'm, if I'm incorrect, uh, Alderman Raisler, but on a two to two vote. Um, there was a concern on my part, and the reason that I voted um, not to allow the use of holiday and vacation time in counting towards overtime was, in my mind, we were providing a benefit that was built on a benefit, and that did not seem to me at least to make sense. So that the ordinance as written um, overall, and particularly, we did not have financial information available to us at the Salary and Grievance Committee, um, does seem to make uh, sense. Um, there was some discussion in the committee uh, with respect to allowing uh, holiday time to be used in the calculation of overtime. Uh, and I think there was more of a consensus, and again, uh, I'm sure the chair will, will correct me if I'm wrong, more of a consensus among the four of us who were there uh, to allow uh, the use of, of a holiday time. So in the Christmas week, for example, if everybody is off and then one works a number of hours uh, during the rest of the week, then that holiday time would count uh, toward uh, uh, would count toward overtime. Uh, so that seemed to be a, a compromise, at least at the time of the committee meeting, that, um, well, it, it, the, the vote actually was two to two on the, on the issue. But on the, in terms of the holiday, using holiday time, uh, the, the, there did seem to be more of a spirit of, uh, of compromise there. I'm not quite sure where to take it at this point, and I would certainly defer to our chair or to other members of the committee in that respect. But I wanted to, to, to indicate why, why I would vote no uh, against, uh, vote against the ordinance changes proposed. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, the vote was two to one, or we wouldn't be here right now. Okay. Um, I believe uh, Alderman Koth had to leave, so it was, it was two to one. Uh, anyway, um, why I supported this at the community level, number one, is um, we want to kind of go back to the, the private industry and, and look at how they handle some things, and I guess I'll ask all of you if, um, whether it's the beginning of the weekend or the, the, the end being um, Sunday for the work week or Saturday, uh, if you're going to call a plumber to your house, um, you're not going to pay a straight wage, and he's not going to gain a straight wages either. Uh, the same be true if it's a holiday. Now, heaven forbid it's a holiday on a Sunday, um, then um, all bets are off as far as what you're going to pay. And that's kind of what, what I based my um, argument or discussion on um, for the, 
uh, salaries and grievances as well. If, if the employee has scheduled time off, which is scheduled way in advance, and they had planned on being off, I think it's up to our managers to determine whether or not uh, they should um, have those people come into work additional hours and whether it would be overtime uh, or not. And if they are off on a period of time and say we have a snowstorm where they have to be called in, I think it's only fair to compensate them at the time and a half um, as we previously had um, forever and ever. So uh, I did support this um, and I will support it again. Like I said, I, I think that uh, the employees are, are going out of their way to, to be available. Um, a lot of this deals with call-in times, not necessarily just uh, scheduled overtime. And there's nothing uh, currently in uh, for any call-in that compensates anyone other than a, a two-hour at straight pay at this time. So uh, I think it's only fair uh, for the employees and um, I think it's a good trade-off for the city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Reese. Alderman Versi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I actually echo some of the thoughts that uh, Alderman Donahue had, Alderperson Donahue had, with it being a benefit on top of a benefit. My only real big issue is where are you getting an extra $150,000 from to cover this cost? That's a big cost that we, how many times have we discussed the budget that we're adding another $150,000 on top of that? You had the financials that that's what's going to cost us to okay this. Taxpayers' money, another $150,000 to cover holiday pay or actually vacation pay considered as overtime. That's my real issue with that. Um, the, maybe send it back to committee and do the holiday pay as counted on there, but not vacation pay. But um, I can't support this the way it's written right now just because of the expenditure. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Six eyes, nine noes. The motion fails. Six six. Six six. <laughs> Report a committee from Public Works recommending authorizing appropriate city officials to execute an amendment to the shared dark dog park agreement. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Van Akron. Uh, I would make a motion to uh, uh, send this to uh, refer this to the Finance Committee. Second. It's been moved and seconded to refer to Finance. Under discussion, Alderman Bourne. Under discussion, since our public works meeting, and this did pass at the public works meeting on a vote to two to one, however, I've been made aware of some additional financial considerations that we were not made aware of at the public works meeting. Perhaps Finance Chairman Hammond would want to just briefly comment on those before as the reason why we should refer this to finance. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, on the surface, I have no problem with the shared dog park. I do think there's a couple things that the agreement doesn't address. For example, if the dog park ceases to exist and there's a detachment, who pays for the detachment? Or in other words, de-annexing, who pays for that? Um, it's uh, been brought to my attention. There's about a somewhere between $1,100 and $1,200 fee that we have to pay to the state uh, for annexing. That hasn't been addressed. Who's going to pay for that? Um, some law enforcement costs. Um, again, those haven't been, at least to my knowledge, uh, to my knowledge, haven't been addressed at who's going to pay for that. Um, so I think it makes sense to at least uh, take a look at the financial aspect of it. I think everybody thinks it's a good idea, um, you know, to have one set of rules, one set of, uh, um, uh, you know, one jurisdiction, if you will, for that uh, for the dog park. But I think we just want to take a look at the financial aspect of it first. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Any other discussion? Motion is to re-refer to finance. Clerk will call the roll. No. Twelve ayes, two noes, one abstention. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced, 7-1 will be referred. Other matters. Reading the plea. That matter slide over. Okay. Eight. I'm sorry. Other matters, 8-1 resolution by Alderman Hammond and Decker authorizing transfer of appropriations 2012 budget. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to pass the ordinance. Second. It's been moved and seconded to pass the ordinance. Is there any discussion? It's actually a resolution. 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 Really not. 
Same thing. Same. <laughs> Hearing no discussion, clerk will call the roll. Fifteen ayes. Motion carried. Now other matters. Attorney McNeil. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Nine dash one is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2013, and June 30, 2014. I'll go to law and licensing. Uh, Nine point two is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Kapoor and Associates regarding the environmental activities and site conditions summary update for the Ramada Inn property and city parking lot. I'll go to finance. 9.3 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Ryan Noel Zimmerman requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 1409 South 17th Street. That will go to public protection and safety. Motion to adjourn. All so down. move, sir. Second. And move the second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. And vote. And vote. And press. Adjourn. Susie? Uh,